Okay, welcome back to Vintage Steel Garage. Tonight I'm going to be having a look at the alternator. This alternator in particular is on my uh, GMC pickup truck. Now it's not standard fitment on the truck. Originally it was a dynamo with a separate regulator, but I changed it for reliability reasons to a modern alternator that's all built in one way. You've just got the 12 volt uh, signal to the alternator light and then the 12 volts to the battery and everything's built in it's got the rectifier built in there you can see through there the regulator at the back here I've undone the screws here just to speed up the strip process and this is just a bracket that I've made which actually helps fit on my actual uh, GMC truck so basically <coughs> GMC truck I've not ran it since um, last year December so it's sat over winter outside come to fire it up got the alternator light on so the first thing you think is well maybe the fan belts snapped or slipped that was in place and tight so that was okay here uh, the next thing to check is the actual voltage so a simple voltmeter basically put it across the battery terminals reads about 12 and a half volts when you start the engine it should go up to about 13 and a half showing the alternator works it didn't it stayed the same in fact it dropped off a bit because of the MSD fitted is using the, um, the voltage that's available and the other way to check finally is this is the uh, the B plus or the output to your battery it's quite a hefty lead put the voltmeter across here cross and negative of the battery again set, start it up uh, sorry set it up with the engine not running you read about 12 and a half volts start the engine up it should go up to about 13 and a half 13.8 volts it didn't it stayed it stayed at that voltage so I'm assuming there's a problem in either the regulator which is this part here or the actual rectifier so I looked online this is that's classed as a Lucas A127 um, alternator as used on a lot of the British cars um, MGB's Fiesta's uh, minis that sort of thing so what I did found this kit here which is a new regulator and a new um, this is a regulator there so you can see that's a direct replacement for that one direct replacement for that one there comes with some screws and then I also got a new uh, rectifier set as well so you can see the rectifying diodes in here uh, that will need some soldering for the wires to go to the uh, winding of the, of the actual armature itself and that's the pickup that you can see there so I'll show you how to replace this but first of all uh, just a bit, a bit of a link I bought this uh, off eBay from a place called uh, Rotating Electric Electrics Limited they've got a website I actually found them they were on actually on Amazon and also on eBay I bought them through eBay they based in uh, mid Ulster and basically I think I ordered the parts on the Friday and they arrived on the Monday so I can't complain about that and it cost £16 for these two parts now if they fix the part a new alternator is about £100 so I've saved myself some money uh, I'll put a link on for their website here but it's quite good because even though they're called Rotating Electrics Limited they do a lot more than that so you can see there they do uh, alternators, wiring, reflectors, starters, starter motors, trailer sockets, terminals, switches, tools, connections, relays, insulation tape. So all sorts of things, uh, battery terminals, all sorts of things, electrically automotive. So they, they seem pretty good and I'm pleased with the response so far. So I'm going to give them a thumbs up and uh, put a link in the, in the write-up for them. So, to start off stripping the alternator down first thing to do I'm going to take some of these I want to take the top of the casing off so we can lift it all out so the first thing I've just partially stripped this already is take the regulator out now these come with new screws so those can be discarded over there the regulator simply unplugs and is off there and you can see it's got the brushes there for the motor for the actual winding for the commutator so again I suppose this motor is probably this alternator is probably to uh, maybe two to three years old I can't quite remember it's not done many miles um, so these aren't worn but again I suppose the idea in the future is if they are wet worn you just take that off throw it away and fit a new so I'm going to replace that as a matter of course uh, there's just a couple of terminals here to disconnect first of all basically there's a, a positive terminal here 
we'll disconnect these some insulating washers just make a note of how those have come off so you can put them back There's a smaller terminal here an 8mm terminal so we'll take that off that's got an insulating washer as well and then there's three studs here that are holding the actual back of the case onto the alternator and the whole thing will then come apart that's one two Three. and then there's just a couple of two studs here that I've sold the casing on so we just take those on right so there's the back of the casing coming off it's probably at this point just worth noting the orientation of where the actual body of it sits in relation to the stud so I'm just going to mark that so they're just lining up there so I know where they sit in alright so this can now come off now best thing to be careful here is with your workbench that you've not got iron filings everywhere like I normally have and it's going to stick to the motor and then cause problems in the future so I'm just going to put this to one side for now first of all I'm just going to check the windings on here so a good reading on the windings is about three and a half ohms so it's worth checking this I did check this to be honest before I bought the parts but I'll just show you how I do it so you can see it's reading there, open circuit put them together it's going to read zero um, so if we just put them on the two pick up points there it's reading approximately 3 ohms which is what it said, it said 3 to 3.5 three ohms so I'm happy that that's good so again that's ok, there's nothing else to strip out on there, there's nothing else to take apart I'm happy with that, I know how that locates back in uh, with the case, so I'm going to put this over here bring this back into play, now obviously you can see here this is where take the new one out you can see it's similar we've got the some of the insulation to transfer over from one to the other uh, looks an identical part a lead on it and how this is held onto here it's got the two wires for the outer soldered through so I need to desolder these so I can take this off and put this in its place so I'll get my soldering iron out and show you this so I've got my soldering iron set up here now and up to temperature uh, there's three lots of contacts to desolder to be honest uh, I thought there was two but there's one, two, three there so I'm just taking these off, I've took the first two off um, my soldering iron is probably a little bit borderline on on wattage for these type of connections so it's just going to take a little bit more work uh, but while we're waiting for that I should just really say that I'm quite impressed my subscribers have now gone up to massive 36 so uh, that is definitely extending outside my family and my immediate family so there's obviously someone there I do not know who's watching this rubbish so that's inspiring thank you maybe someone's learning something um, 
if I was posh I would have had a nice uh, desoldering station that I could have just extracted all the solder off these and taken it out but again the average hobbyist is not really going to have that in their garage you're more likely going to have a soldering iron which you can buy for about £10 or maplins or something like that so I've nearly got these desoldered Right, okay, so I've removed the, desoldered the old rectifier there, which is that, and you can see that's a new one. So exactly the same part. That's going to replace that. So it's just a three lugs desolder on there. I've checked the readings on the alternator, on the actual rotor itself. So I'm just making, making, making sure I've got some continuity in the windings. So if I go between the winding and the body, it's open circuit on them all so that's good and if I go across the windings I've got 0.3 of an ohm there and 0.3 of an ohm there so I'm happy that the windings are okay on that so it's definitely the reason for no output I would say is down to a combination of either the rectifier here or the regulator so replacing both of those which came new so these two came new as I said for £16 from uh, Rotating Electrics Limited. I'll put the link in the in the in the um, in the write up so people can follow it, and you can purchase your own from there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to solder this into place. So all I need to do is feed these terminals through. To pick up on the new one. And I know from previously they would just push through the terminals until they came they were just flush with the top so that's going to be about the right position for it there's going to be a little bit of flex in the cable there and then this just needed to be crimped in like that and then I can solder those into place so I'll just solder these in um, and then we know we've got that Done, and then we can start to rebuild. So that's the first one soldered in. Second one. Oh, that's the third one in place there. Uh. Right, so I'm happy they're all okay there. So let's finish with the soldering. So, those are soldered back in place, they look like they've taken nicely, happy with the solder on there, happy with the solder on there, happy with the solder on there, that's back in place, just need to transfer across the insulator there, and that one, we can now start to put it back onto the body, so I'll bring the body back into play, remember I put these painted lines on here to line up with the body so they were lining up like that there so it's back in place free to move it's now a case of putting the housing on just gonna take that screw out of there feed that wire through there for the regulator Body's back on there. 
That's right, so three screws holding the body together. You can see it's a fairly quick job really. Now I'm not opposed to taking it to a, an alternator alter shop and having it rebuilt. It's just more the case of it's the faff of taking it there, dropping it off, waiting, going back, picking it up. Where this is something you can do yourself at home. Very basic tools. I mean, I've had a 10mm span, an 8mm span, a long nose plier, a 5mm socket, and a soldering iron. And that, a little bit of knowledge, and that was it. And it saved me nipping out, going for the parts, ordered the parts, they arrived in three or four days time. But like I say, I ordered them on the Friday, it's the Monday night now. So I'm fitted, so basically we're in a week, I'm back on the road. I can guarantee, so this is just an insulator here so these studs don't touch the body. I can guarantee if I'd um, needed to have it taken somewhere, I would have dropped it off this Saturday, picked it up the following Saturday maybe, it could have been ready, it might not have been ready, it would have cost me £100 would have cost me the fuel to get there and get back blah 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 so it's just a lot easier all round to get it done like this we also got that satisfaction as well that I've probably saved myself £80 There we go, that's in place. Uh, the 10 mil stood up there. This is a stud, it's basically a repeat of the spade terminals there. And they just don't get used in this application. It's a multi purpose alternator. So I just don't need those. Nip the 8 mil stood up there. Nip this 8 mil stood up. So that's, that's fastened up. So that one's fastened up. The final one fastened up would have been embarrassing if we were driving somewhere. I think I've said to you before, I like to have an annual pilgrimage to Le Mans, which is uh, probably about, I think, 600 miles, 1200 miles, probably about a 1200 mile round trip each, each year. So there's a lot of driving to be done. I really want to make sure my car makes it there and back, so everything needs to be of a good quality. Right, so just check that the motor isn't binding, so we, that's nice, we haven't caught anything in there. So the last bit we've got to put on is the actual regulator. So as I said, the regulator came with three new screws, so that's good that we can reuse those screws. And there we go, so it's just got this little protective cap here over the actual bushes. There we go. So there are the contacts, they're just going to work. You can see on this one, they're just slightly worn as the, the radius in, where these are actually straight. So they will wear in like that. You can see it's an identical part. So, electrical connection onto here. that on there, drop those into there, three screws in there and we're done. Simple as that. Much of it, I like to just do the final tightening of a screwdriver by hand because then I can just gauge how tight we've got them. So that seems pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Oops. So there we go. One alternator rebuilt, ready to go back on. And thank you very much to Rotating Electrical Limited. Put a link on the website. 
Thumbs up for parts, arrived very quick, £16, very happy.